no longer a slave to fear. Are you a child of God here this morning? Yes. I don't know about y'all, but I is. Oh, let's get things going here. I believe we're Facebook Live and we're videoing and stuff. By internet, maybe watch us uh, today. Thank you for being here at Gilead Baptist Church. You're welcome here. You're welcome to come down and check us out live and uh, uh, worship with us. Uh, make sure you give us a comment, hit like. Make sure you like and share and get the word out. Um, this helps the, the gospel of Jesus Christ go across the nation and across this world. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer in this social media stuff now. Uh, it has been, it has been uh, uh, real good. The, the video, the, uh, where, where, when you go, we, see if you're an admin, you can go in there and look at all this stuff and see, you know, where people are watching in the world and all this kind of stuff. We got people all over the world watching this service, either this morning, right now, or they'll watch it later on. But uh, there's a lot of like and shares, a lot of people viewing this message, and we all get to play a part in that. Amen. Amen. This is us sowing the seed because here's the deal. See, there's a method to this pastor's madness. And here's the deal. The Bible promises once that gospel is preached to the whole world, then Jesus is coming back. And I'm just trying to, we are just trying to as a body, small body of Christ, trying to speed that up. How many want Jesus to come back right now? Amen. I'm ready for that sky to split in that Archangel go boom, 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 or whatever song he gonna play, and uh, suck us on up out of here. The rapture of the church, and that all starts tribulation, and then, and then uh, seven years later we coming back to kick the devil's butt. Amen. 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 I, I'm excited about that. How I many? How I many been sucker punched by the enemy? Amen. Oh, bless God this morning. I just love. The Word of God and what I find in the Word of God. And, you know, I, I did a 21-day fast. And, and y'all pray for my wife. Uh, she decided to extend hers to 40 days. But your pastor only made 21 days. That was enough for me. But this is the first time in my fast I really didn't get clear indication from God during the fast. It wasn't until after my fast ended is when... God really showed up and showed me a clear vision, uh, not only for this body of Christ, but also for our future and mine and Tracy's future. And there's, there's, there's action steps that we have to take on our part to ensure, to stay on that path, to ensure that what God has for this body of Christ and what he has in your own personal lives, you know, there's, there's some stuff that we need to do on our part. And that's why we're here this morning, right? Amen. I mean, we're here to do what? Learn more about Jesus. Become yes. more Christ-like. We're not just up here twiddling our thumbs, wasting our time, you know, singing to a few little songs and and putting a little bit of money in the offering and whatnot. No, we come here to learn about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hear the gospel. See, my calling as a pastor here is to train you to do the ministry to educate help educate to help build up to help encourage you guys to do the work of the ministry that is what the actual pastor is called in each church so we have to learn then once we learn what we've learned then we need to apply that into our lives and you will be amazed how many doors God will open up or people he will send by your path that you can be a blessing to. Not only financially, but also spiritually. You know, we have the key. If you're a grateful follower of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're just a believer here this morning, you know, just trying to fill all this out, this is different. But if you're a grateful follower of Jesus Christ, you have the key to these people's salvation. Not that it's going to be found in you. It's only found through the blood bought blood of Jesus Christ and what he did his work on the cross. Amen? Amen? But God will use you as his hands and feet to impact that person's life. You know, the word says that we're supposed to be a candle that's on a hill. But how many times do we light it and then try to stick it under a bow or hide it in the closet? 
That's not what we're called to do. We're called, if we're a grateful follower of Jesus Christ, we're called to be that 24-7. Uh, I even want to eat, drink, and sleep Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Because the more I do that, the more I pursue after him, the more he reveals to me. And the more he reveals to me, the more I can give out to you. So if you have your Bibles this morning, we didn't get very far. Uh, I don't even think we got to the first point last week. But we're going to dive right in. If you'll turn with me to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. There's a lot of things found in God's Word. Now we're going to try to look at the seven promises that I find in God's Word. As I said, this was a picture that I saw on Facebook. That somebody had posted. I can't remember if they tagged me in it or not. But once I started looking at it. And I started seeing what number one was. Number two was. Number three was. And then I started researching that. Started doing a Bible study on each one of these areas. This thing just exploded. And it was like wow. Wow. And the spirit spoke to me and said they need to hear this. So that's why we're here. Simple little, some, some simple little witnessing thing that somebody posted on Facebook that would hope it would bless somebody. I don't even know who it was. But I remember saving the picture and uh, on my phone to where I could go study it out a little bit later. So whoever that was on Facebook, you sowed seed out there. Well, you're seeing a harvest right now. So turn to your neighbor once again say, hold on, we're going someplace this morning. We're going to try to look at seven particular ways that we can find promises in God's Word. How, do, how many know the Word promises us? See, we're never alone. We're never alone. Did you know if you're a grateful follower of Jesus Christ, you're never going to die? Now you say, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Dave. We all want to die. Well, that's true in a sense. But our bodies are built. We were designed at first not to die. Adam and Eve was going to live forever. He told them to be fruitful and multiply. But things got a little out of kilter when they sinned. Then death entered in. That's the reason that we have to die. But once we physical death, what's the word say? Absent from the bodies to be what? Present with, the Present with who? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Mm. Now I think I could take that as a promise found in God's word. That I am not going to die. This physical body may die, but this spiritual man that's deep down inside of me is never going to die. And I have a choice today where I'm going to spend eternity. Every person under the sound of my voice has a choice today. Yo, you, you guys watching by internet, you have a choice today where you're going to spend eternity. Now, you can spend eternity with your lost loved ones who have, who have gone on to be with the Lord. If they, if they confess Jesus as, as their... Uh, Lord and Savior, then they made heaven. The Bible, the Bible promises us that. But if they didn't, they're not going to be there. Sorry. That's just what the Word says. Amen. But there's a lot of people that I can't wait to see. To sit down and have conversations with these people. See, these are promises that I can give myself hope even when I am facing my mortality, even when I am on my death, you know, my mom believed in the hope of Jesus Christ. The last time I saw her alive, I remember sitting next to her hospital bed and I began to weep. <clears throat> I didn't want to lose my mom. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't prepare for that. I was trying to prepare myself, but I just kind of just finally just broke down. And she grabbed my hand. She squoze my hand. And she, I could hear her say something. So I leaned in further toward her. And she told me, she says, I wish you could have as much peace in this as Jesus has given me. And I thought to myself, wow. 
Wow. See, she believed in the promises that she found personally in the Word of God. That when her body expired here, when she took her last breath here, her next breath is going to be with Jesus in heaven. And my grandma and my grandpa and those who have already have gone on to be with the Lord, those are promises that we're going to live for eternity. Your spiritual being is going to live forever. And that ought to make some of you shout, but that ought to make some of you kind of think and say, whoa, wait a minute. Because see, we only have one chance to get this right. And that's why we're here. Did you know so also one of the promises in God's word, whatever you're doing here is going to go with you. It's going to determine what you're going to do when you get up there. Don't think you're just going to go to, when you're in heaven, you're just going to go to church on the Sunday and sit in a pew. Okay, it's not like that. Heaven is a busy place. Heaven is a noisy place. There's always going to be something to do. There's going to be no tears, no more pain, no more sickness. That will make some of y'all just stand up and shout. No more sickness, no more pain, no more tears. No more darkness. So there's not going to be any need for sleep. And if you really think of that in our carnal minds, it's like, I could probably figure maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe a week's worth of stuff to do, but what after that? We're talking eternity. But these are some of the promises that are found in God's word. Why are the promises in God's word there? For us to claim. That's a big one right there. You can't have a promise of God not unless you're willing to claim the promises of God. God said we should walk in divine help, divine prosperity, and peace this be all, all understanding. There's many, many, many promises in God's word that we can find. God wants us to walk in divine health. He wants us to be a blessed People, we should be, as I shared last week, we should be so blessed that we can be a blessing to others. Not to enable, not to give a hand out, but we should be a blessing to others to give them a hand up, not a hand out. Okay, if they need a hand out, there's government assistance. They can go to the government to give some assistance. Okay? You have to really discern in that area. God wants us to have extreme faith, abundant love. You know, God's word says, you will know them. You will know that they are my disciples by what? Their works. No. You'll know that they're my disciples by their love for one another. See, it's the love thing that separates the believer from the grateful follower of Jesus Christ. Because the grateful follower has usually more than likely have been through some stuff in their lives. And God has brought them out of a lot of chaos. I know I was one. The Bible says those who have been forgiven for much what? Love much. What a powerful concept. See, when I was forgiven and I knew I was forgiven, how could I not love even my enemy? Now, how hard is that? To love those and to bless those who curse you or despitefully use you. How hard is that? Do we, do we always win 100% in that area? Have we got honest with ourselves? No. But I find the more I keep my nose into this book, the more I read this book, the more I apply this, the more I listen to Christian music all the time, the more I, I, I listen to pre, uh, preaching on the internet, the more I fill my stuff up, the more I fill myself up, the more I grow in Christ. If, 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 and y'all have heard me say many times, and I'm speaking to you online too, 
if this is all the Jesus you're getting is about 45 minutes on a Sunday morning, you're starving yourself to death spiritually. And be careful, you're, thin, you're, you're treading on very, very thin ice. This word right here, the promises in this word can keep you from sinning. Can you live? Let me ask you a question. Can you live a sin-free life? What's all quiet in here? Let me, let me ask you a question. Have you sinned this morning? Yep. Yeah. Um, yes. yeah. How? I'm going to call you out. Where'd you fall short at? <laughs> My thinking. They were good ones. See, we can be honest, this is church. They can't they can't see your faces on Facebook, okay? They hear your voice, but they can't see your faces. They only see my face. Huh? See, these are things we need to think about. I believe we can live a sinless life for periods of a time. I really believe that. Amen. Because the more I get into this right here, the more I bury myself, the more I submerge myself in Jesus and God chasing, the less I find I sin in my life. The more, if temptation comes up, I go, whoop. The more when things come my way, I filter it through this book right here. That's very important for all believers. All my decisions in life, big decisions, are filtered through this book. Is this God's will for me to move this direction? Do I have a green light do I need to chase after God through prayer and fasting before I make that decision? All that's found in this book. I promise you. I didn't marry that woman on the back road until I prayed and fasted. And here's the deal. I really, really, really like Tracy. But if I wouldn't have got a green light from God, I wouldn't have married her. How many decisions do we make every day and don't even consult the Lord? Mm. Deuteronomy. It's all quiet in here. Got you thinking this morning. Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. It says this. If you fully obey the Lord, your God. Who's God? My God. My God. Your God. Our God. See, God wants us to have that personal relationship with him. I have a personal relationship with my God and my Jesus, and it may be a little bit different than yours. My walk's a little bit different. Now, we all have the same calling to love God and love our neighbors. Good pet, good pet. That's a lot of our church, bless God. Amen. We all have the same calling, but we may have different paths, different avenues that we go to that calling. You might not be called to come behind this pulpit, but then again, you might be. But I promise you this, you ain't going to get there without this. Praise God. You're not going to fulfill your calling until you get into this. That's the reason why so many Christians live such a defeated life is because of their lack of knowledge of God's word. Because he's Satan right here. If you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow his commandments. Where is his commandments? In the book. In the book. And uh, Moses said, his commandments that I give you here today. How many went and looked and seen what Moses was talking about this week? I challenged you last week to do that. That way you kind of know the rest of the story. It says, God, your God, will set you high above all the nations. You'll be blessed when you come in. You will, uh, and, and these blessings will accompany you. So it don't matter where you go or how fast you go. You can't outrun the blessings of God. Now, how many know we need to be a blessed people? Amen. Amen. Yes. We need to be a blessing to be a blessing. We need to be blessed in every area and every asset 
in our lives. And I'm not talking about just financially. Because see, a lot of people think about blessings and they're like, well, I need money. God stick this money in my pocket. I need money, Lord. Stick that money in my pocket. See, that's the way most people pray when it comes to money. My Bible says, if I don't work, guess what? I don't eat. I don't eat. Which tells me I need to get off my rump and get out there and work. Right. I can't just sit there and say, okay, God, I've got a need. Put money in my pocket. And then if you need me, I'm going to be on the couch watching Netflix. Ain't that the way it works? No, no. Oh, no. that's not the way it works. Now, God will bless us. Don't get me wrong. He'll bless us financially. But, you know, I like the blessing of peace that I have upon my life. And be able to extinguish the, like a fire extinguisher, the attacks of the enemy. See, when I found out this morning, they, they uh, put my account under review because somebody didn't like something that I posted. And I think it has to do with Facebook Live. And maybe that person's listening. If it is, I pray for you. Amen. I pray for you. We as a church pray for you. But see, I can take the tax like that. See, stuff like that, it don't bother me. Now, could I let it bother me? Oh, it tried to. Oh, it tried to. Because usually if you, if you follow me any on Sunday mornings when I'm working on my sermon, I'll pop a picture. And then I upload it to Facebook, and I upload it to Gilead page to let you guys know, and to let God, people out on the internet know which direction that I'm going. So they might be able to see the scripture, go ahead and read the scripture base, and kind of get the title, and kind of figure out which direction that God has lead me. And then when I went to do that this morning, it says, well, you've got to log back in. So I tried to log in. And it's like, how do we know who you are? I'm like, what? So as I was answering the questions, I was popping pictures also to where I could document it all. Because it was crazy. It's the first time this has ever happened. Now, I've had some, some, some pictures that I've posted of dead deer or dead coon or something like that that somebody's complained about. And I'm, I'm okay with that. But I ain't posted nothing like that in a long time. So, But see, I could have let that get me upset. But see, this is the way I see it. If the enemy is not attacking me, then I need to check myself. Huh? But the promises of God's word says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, what's God going to do? It's all quiet in here. It says God will raise up a standard against them. Hmm. So in other words, when somebody comes to attack me or character assassinate me, I don't have to, come on, pick up the dukes. Come on, let's, let's, come on, put your, let's do this. See, I don't have to do that. All I got to say is, Holy Spirit, you know this ain't right. So take care of my lot way for me. Because huh? I'm going to keep my eyes focused on Jesus. I'll let my or I may just dispatch, dis, dispatch an angel to handle that for me. Amen. Did you know you could do that? Oh, y'all got to get in God's Word. We're missing out on so much. Here, that's, that's for another teaching. Let's look at verse 3. It says, uh, you will be blessed in the city, blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. The crops of your land, your young, your livestock, your calves, your herd. In other words, your workplace. Your workplace. People are looking at you and saying, how is that guy so glad? How did he get all these raises? How does, how does he, how does he get, keep getting promoted like he's doing? You know, every promotion that I've had since I've been a Christian, and here's the deal. I can get into the ministry and it don't take me very long to climb up to the top. Now, is it anything that I'm doing? No. It's just the favor of God that I have up on my life. It's like broken chains. I love broken chains. I'm a national director for broken chains. I didn't ask for that. That's just favor from God to be promoted to the top 
level of this ministry. And I enjoy it. I love doing it. But even, even in work, in my workplace, finding favor. Because God's word says if we get into this book, we're going to find favor with God. Huh? And when we find God, the word says, then we'll find favor with men. So all I got to do is look for favor of God, do my part, and he's going to cause favor to happen with men. See, the Bible says that we are to let our shine, let our light shine, correct? We should do that. In other words, in that, we're supposed to stick out, not isolate. That means everywhere we're at, they should know that you are a Christian. Amen. Amen. I've had some conversations with people. And then after a little while, they tell me that they're a minister or a pastor or even a grateful follower of Jesus Christ or believe in Jesus is what I get the most. And after the conversation I just had with them and hearing what they're saying, I was shocked. Are people shocked when they find out that you're a Christian? See, because God's word says we that light on top of the hill. Now, if this room was totally black, we was in here at night, and I lit a candle and held it above my head, not too high to the ceiling, don't want to catch the place on fire, Okay, but held that light. Everybody in this room could see that light. That's the same way we're supposed to be as Christians. See, this world is looking. Even when I was a heathen out there, hating on God, I was still looking for hope. I never knew or dreamed it would be found through Jesus Christ in this book by the promises that I live today. But when we're that light, everybody is looking at us. Hmm? Everybody is looking at us. We got to be that light on the hill. We got to be a blessing. He said he's going to bless us coming in, bless us going out. Now how can we be blessed and not be a light? Because a lot of times by our actions and by our behavior... We snuff out that light. And then we're not a light anymore. Huh? Has that ever happened in your life? I know it's happened in mine. There's only one way to get that light shining, shining right again. And what worked for me is I had to hit my knees and pray and repent and move away from that, make amends to who I need to make amends to. And guess what? That light started becoming bright and brighter and brighter again until I was right back where I was. The Bible said we all go far short. We're going to trip up. We're going to mess up from time to time, but it's what do we do when we mess up? You can't stay there. See, a lot of people, that's what they'll do. They'll just stay there. Or they'll just fall on the ground I'm just speaking kind of metaphorically. I think that's a word. I just follow the ground. Oh, I'm just going to lay here for a little while. Nobody loves me anymore. Anybody ever had that victim, victim mentality? I know I did for years. I did for years. See, I didn't realize how blessed I was. But once I started getting into God's Word, once I read Deuteronomy 28, I was like, wait a minute. You mean I'm supposed to be the head and not the tail? Because see, most of my life, I always felt like I was the tail wagging the dog and not the dog wagging the tail. I was always at the bottom. And I got tired of being at the bottom. And so I started climbing up to the top. You know how I climbed up to the top? 
Because when I found the promise of God, I would write it down. I'd pin it with a sticky note in my room that I had at the time. And I would pray them promises over my life. Even when I was still being angry, now, Lord, your Bible says, in your anger, sin not. So you're going to have to help me stop doing this stuff. You're going to have to help me quit flying off the handle. And you know what happened? He helped me. Amen. He helped me. Because I'm a blessed to be a blessing. I'm that light. And I can't be that light if I'm wanting to slap the taste out of people's mouth. Amen. Or if I get mad and start cussing somebody out. Or if, or if I get short with my spouse. Screaming at my kids. That's not the light. And don't get me wrong. Kids need to be disciplined sometimes. But I don't think screaming is the way to do it. Amen. Somebody screaming at a kid, it goes through me like a bug lightning. Because I was screamed at when I was a kid. You can get your point across. So now and talk to the child. Get on the child's level. If you have to get on your knees and look them in the face, if they that short, get on the child's level and speak to them like a human being. How many have been going through some stuff this week? I just really feel the need to stop and, and pray for folk. You don't, have to, you don't have to say what your need is or anything like that, but I'm just going to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Is that all right with y'all? Yeah. Can we just come in a prayer of agreement yeah. real quick? Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, we're looking to your face, Father God. Lord, there's been some struggles in this body of Christ. Lord, there's been some attacks, Father God. But Lord, when you say the enemy comes in like a flood, you'll... You'll, you'll rise up a standard against them, Father God. So, Lord, we put you on this situation, Father God. Lord, we just ask that you would intervene, whether it's sickness, Father God, whether it's clarity of mind, Father God. Lord, if it's, if it's depression, Father God, Lord, we just, we just come up against that, Father God. And, Lord, we come up against the attacks of the enemy. We, we just ask that you would confuse these people who attack us, Father God. Lord, confuse their thoughts, Father God. I find that in your word. And Father God, we declare healing. We declare prosperity over our lives. We declare peace and blessings. We declare love upon our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Let's read on. Verse 6, it says, you'll be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Did you know the Bible says you're supposed to set up an inheritance You know, for your children's children is what the Bible says? I always see a bumper sticker. I used to travel around a lot. And every once in a while, I'll see a bumper sticker, and it says, we're spending our children's inheritance. Now, how anti-Bible is that? <clears throat> In other words, I should be saving not only for my children, but my children's children. Now, myself, my children got enough life insurance policies to fight over when I'm gone. And you better not fight over it. Because there's a clause in there for that. Amen? Amen. But also, we already have savings accounts for our grandbabies. And we put, not much, but we put something in there to save for our grandbabies. Why do we do that? Why would I put up money for my grandbabies? Number one, the Bible tells me to. Sir, Dale, all that money and all that kind of stuff, you can't take it with you when you go. You come into this world naked, bless God, you're going to leave naked. Amen. <clears throat> but the Bible tells me. See, there's a blessing in that. Because, see, I can pass, pass down a financial blessing to my children and my grandchildren. Now, hopefully they're good starts with it, but that's up to them. See, I've done what I'm supposed to do as a Christian male to bless my children, to be a blessing to my family. Let's look at verse 7. 
It says the Lord will grant that your enemies that rise up against you will be defeated before you. Didn't we just pray that? Yeah. Yes. Wow. So you mean I don't have to fight the battle past the day? Mm -mm. If you're a grateful follower of Jesus Christ, all you've got to do is put God on that situation. God, God can do more in that situation than you can. You just walk it out in peace and in love. And don't, don't walk it out with your face all wrinkled up. <laughs> Bless God, you get them with them. Huh? Yes. See, I mean, that was my best mean face. That's right. I can't even hardly make a mean face anymore. I remember when I got baptized years ago. You know, people were scared of me when I when I first walked into that church. They went to the pastor and said, what are we going to do about that big guy on the back row? He scares us. True story. But after I surrendered to Christ and three months later, they asked me if I wanted to say anything at my baptism. And I said, sure. So they gave me a microphone. Well, you ain't supposed to give an early preacher. So I didn't know I was a preacher yet, but a microphone. Well, then I took off testifying. But I do remember, and I do have a video of that. I'll show it here one of these days. But I do remember uh, stating that I, I said I just can't quite put my finger on it, but I can't seem to get this smile off my face. And that's not who I was back then. But see, it took a change. It took asking. It took surrendering myself to Christ and letting Him I was still in a lot of stuff back then, even when I got saved. But it took him to start fighting my battles for me. And that peace that transcends all understanding, I started walking in that almost immediately after surrendering from Christ. And I knew that my life was changed. I knew I was a blessed man right there. But quite, quite figure it out. But more the more I read God's word. Woo. I stand here blessed and highly favored. Mm -hmm. And I'm not tooting my horn. That's what Jesus tells me. Now, if that's what Jesus tells me, how can I how, how can I not walk in that? How can I not walk in that favor? How can I not walk in that peace? Because we're reading some simple scriptures saying that God's going to bless us. We're going to be blessed coming in, blessed going out. In other words, God is going to bless us in all areas of our life. Are you asking God for something? Are you dreaming big? I don't know about y'all, but I'm dreaming big for this church. Amen. And I, I really haven't. You know, I, I, I was, my, my dream was, you know, God, maybe maybe the pews be more full than, than what they better be in. That was as big as my dream was. And I got, kind of, not scolded is not the word, but Reprimanded, maybe. Maybe that's a little softer word. Put in your place. Yeah, put in my place. Because God said, God, God told me like this. I was down at my shop. I talk to God a lot when I'm down at my shop by myself. Because <laughs> he's the only one to talk to. My coon's too busy to talk to me. He's busy getting in everything. And then my dog, she just looks at me like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I talk to God a lot. And God, God kind of hit me. He said, he said uh, at, right after this fast, he said, Dave, what are you bleeding for? I said, what do you mean what I'm bleeding for? He said, what are you bleeding for? He said, how about Gilead? What are you bleeding for in Gilead? I said, well, I guess to be a good pastor and, 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 and feed your sheep. Ain't that what you call me? He said, he said that, 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 that's, that's good. You're doing that. He said, but what are you bleeding for? Where do you want Gilead to be in five years? And I was like, oh, wow. I, wow, I hadn't really thought about that. And then the very next week, we had a business meeting. And there was a lady there at that business meeting it was kind of inching, or it really, it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Antsy, yeah, antsy. And and she was, finally I was like, okay, you got you got something you want to say? Toward the end of the bedroom meeting. And she's like, yeah. I want to start a business, a building fund. 
for a new building. I was called like, okay. Okay. And then she said, she put her words into action by writing a check. And then before you know it, people started putting money in the middle of that table. And God clearly spoke to my heart and said, okay, here's your vision for this church. Because I've not only birthed it in you, Dave, but I've birthed it in others in this body. We piled that money up and we prayed over it and called it a seed for what God's going to do in the future of this church. You think we're going to be in this building the rest of our lives? No. No, we're not. That's why I said it. That tree blowing over? I don't know about y'all. Y'all may see a tree blowing over, but that's not what I saw. I saw God clearing some land. That's what I saw. That's what I saw in my spirit. So I was like, Okay, I went back to God at my word. I said, okay, okay. This is what I'm believing for. And so I've been praying this, and I've been sharing this vision with my wife. See, we're supposed to be blessed to be a blessing. And I'm not going to mention any names on this one either. They, will, they want you to know they can tell, but I got a phone call. And... There's a gentleman on the other line that have been watching us via Facebook. And he's like, is she okay? Yep. Okay. Been watching us by Facebook. He said, you know, I've been watching you preaching on Facebook. And I noticed that your little church is growing and stuff. And we have a little church in Texas. And I'm going to leave it at that. He said, we believe what God's doing in that little body of Christ right there. He said, we want to come on board. So what we're going to do is we're going to start financially supporting you guys on a monthly basis. Praise God. And we don't know when this is going to lead or when it's going to end or how much or how big. But this is a figure, and he told me the figure that we'll start out with. I said, that is fine. My very first next words to him is, what are you believing for? Because you're going to see People are catching what God is doing. You might not be able to see it, bless God, but your pastor can see it. Some others in this church have caught on to that vision also. And God's going to begin to do a big work. I don't, how do I, how do I, can I, can I, can I, you know how much it costs to build a building on young? I don't know. I haven't counted the cost yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to. And I'm going to get a picture of a building. I'm going to hang it up here in the foyer. And we're going to start believing together. Amen. And here's the deal. I'm asking for God to make it debt free. Praise God. We'll do our part. We'll keep giving into this little bucket right here. And do our part. And watch what God does on his part. Why? Because this church is supposed to be a bless, to be a blessing. And we're going to. And we're going to follow this. And we're going to keep moving forward. And we're going to keep our nose in this book. And we're going to keep praying. And we're going to keep our light shining bright. And keep moving the direction God wants us to move in. Because you know, I don't know, can he, you don't have a show of hands, but can anybody write me a check to build that building next door? I'm talking about building, parking lot, all that kind of stuff. I see a lot of this. You know, I can't write a check like that. But you know something? My God can. There's somebody watching by the internet right now that could write a check for us to have a new building over there. I don't know where it's going to come from. But we're going to put God on it. Amen. And we're going to do our part. Yes, praise God. And then we're going to walk it out. Yeah. We're going to believe. And if we have to go around here and watch around this property and claim this land, so I even want three or four acres, five acres that way too. Mm -hmm. 
See, my God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And, and here's the deal. The second year I was here pastoring, and, and, and God had to remind me of this, I put out a vision statement. Everything on that vision statement came true, except one thing. I didn't have the opportunity to go back to school. I want to go back to school. But I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But every single thing, and that was a long list. And some of y'all that were in that business meeting, y'all y'all heard the vision forecast for that year. And then I, I kind of just throwed it to the side. And, and I was digging through some papers in my office, and I found that. And I started reading it. And I was like, I can check this off. 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 Everything but one thing, and that was me going back to school, was fulfilled. That's amazing. Because when I wrote them on that paper, I couldn't see how any way all this stuff could be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But yet, see, God accomplished it. Almost every bit of it. And see, God can accomplish the vision that he's birthing. See, we're going to dream big. We're going to dream big. And we're going to believe in God. And this is not the direction this message was supposed to go, but I really feel led to share this with you guys. And we're going to watch our God do something through this little body of Christ. Because we're going to be blessed to be a blessing. And we're going to help a lot of folk not only get into heaven, but we're going to help a lot of folk. Because I see the need. And I know y'all see the need in our community. There's a lot of hurting people out there. There's a lot of lost people out there. And if we ain't going to do it, who is? And see, here's the deal. We're not going to do it to blow to our horn. See, the word says that they see your good deeds and they praise your Father in heaven. I have to, I look, when I look around this congregation, I'm reminded of the ragtag team that God gave Jesus, his disciples. Misfits, out of place, fell short in a lot of areas of their lives. But yet God used those 11 men, then 12, later on down the road. God stole you by the 5 and 12 one. Later on down the road that turned this world upside down. And God can use this little body of Christ to do the exact same thing. You know how he's going to do it? Verse 1. If we fully obey what the Lord and carefully follow his commandments. It's going to take all of us to do this. Amen. Don't look at me and say, well, it's all on your back, Pastor Dave. Uh -uh. No, because no. no, we in this together. Yes. Amen? Amen? All in this together. Amen. One of these days, we're cutting that tape on that brand new building and walking in that new building. God's going to remind us of this day. Because when I'm done preaching, I'm going to write this in the back of my Bible about what I talked about. This, See, the Bible says, make the vision plan. That's why I want to build something and stick it. It may be <laughs> I'm not much of a, a drawer. I'm a computer, yes. I'm going to put something out there in that foyer. It might not look like much, but it will when it's done. Amen? Amen. So can y'all agree with me in prayer? Yes. We're going to close this yes. service. Heavenly Father, when we come to you again, Father God, Lord, you've done so much in this small body of Christ in the last three years, Father God. Lord, when I first started pastoring here, I didn't know if we was going to make it. But yet, look where we are now. 
Father, I've seen relationships healed. I've seen people grow through this, what you have called, what you birthed in people that was here way before us, Father God. Lord, if I could see where we're at now in the direction that we're headed. So, Father, every word that has been spoken here, Father God, has been spoken through the power of the Holy Spirit. I ask you, Father God, to let it be done according to thy word. Father, let this little body of Christ be so blessed, Father God, and be such a blessing to this community, even to the state, even through this country, and even to the world, Father God. Lord, we, it can be done by your hand. Help us be obedient. Help us walk in your commands and your decrees. Help us apply those principles to our lives. Help us be that light. This shines so bright, Father God. Lord, help us be good stewards of what you have given us, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. God's people said. Amen. Amen and amen.